As the writers of Game of Thrones know all too well, it's difficult to write a final episode that satisfies everyone, or anybody in the case of that particular finale. It's especially difficult in an age of instant reaction on social media and endless fan theorizing. This list collects 10 of the weirdest endings for much loved TV series that delighted, flummoxed, and horrified viewers. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 10 most bizarre TV series finales in history. Number 10. Riker and Troy upstage the crew of the original Enterprise. Enterprise is often cited as the show that killed the Star Trek franchise. Whilst poor ratings led to its cancellation, it's more likely that the burgeoning Abrams Trek universe made commissioning new TV series more complicated. Whatever the truth, 2005's finale was the last Star Trek episode to air on TV for 12 years. Due to a strange decision by writers Brennan Braga and Rick Berman, it was received poorly. In a well-meaning but ultimately misguided attempt to lovingly bring the franchise full circle, they decided to write the finale as a lost episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. To help him make an important decision, Will Riker seeks inspiration from a simulation of Captain Archer's final mission. The episode disappointed fans and irritated members of the cast, including the ship's captain. It was the only time Scott Bakula was mean to me, Braga later told a convention audience. It's not hard to see why everyone was frustrated either. After spending four years with the crew, we say goodbye to their holographic echoes rather than the characters themselves, while simultaneously being reminded of a superior Star Trek show. Number 9. The Little House on the Prairie Blows Up the Little House on the Prairie was a wholesome, all-American family series about the country's frontier spirit in the face of adversity. The official website talks of the themes of optimism, love, and joy, all of which is at odds with the series' final feature-length TV movie entitled The Last Farewell. This finale finds the residents of the tight-knit community of Walnut Grove faced with the grinding gears of progress. Progress takes the form of a ruthless land grabber who claims the town is owned by his boss, a rich railroad road tycoon. In protest against this, the townsfolk decide to blow up their own homes with dynamite, leaving the rich tycoon with nothing but dirt. After the destruction, the frontier folk simply move on to the next town to start all over again. The story goes that the dynamite plot was purely a practical decision on the part of the writer and the producer. As part of the agreement producer Kent McRae had in renting the land on which the set was built, he had to leave the place as he'd found it. The quickest way to do this, he and writer Michael Landon decided was to just blow up the whole town. Number 8. Mulder and Scully's Miraculous Conception the original X-Files series finale in 2002 was a chaotic climax of nine seasons worth of conspiracies. When the series came back in 2016, there was a hope that fans would get something more satisfying. The 11th season was loosely tied together by the search for their son William, who wasn't their son at all. The season premiere had revealed him to be the son of Scully and the cigarette smoking man, the result of a non-consensual science experiment conducted by the latter. William was technically Mulder's half-brother. The series ends with a blood-soaked finale that asked more questions than it answered. In 43 minutes, Skinner kills Ray's, the cigarette-smoking man presumably kills Skinner, cigarette-smoking man kills William, believing him to be Mulder, Mulder kills the cigarette-smoking man, Scully reveals that she's miraculously pregnant, William is able to survive the shooting due to his regenerative abilities, it's a lot to take in. This was never intended as the very end of The X-Files, and Carter harbors hopes of a 12th season to build on the event he set up. Gillian Anderson has no intention to return, however, so for now, this brutal gunfight marks an abrupt ending for decades of mythology. Number 7. The long-running Texan oil and cattle ranching drama Dallas ended in 1991 with a spectacularly out there finale. It may have once revealed a whole season to have been a dream, but the final episode went several steps further. It begins with lead character J.R. Ewing drunk and alone, contemplating suicide. He's visited by a spirit who shows him just how the world would have been if he'd never been born. In a direct lift from It's a Wonderful Life, J.R. and his guardian angel watch as his brother Bobby becomes a down-and-out 
out, and his brother Gary runs the family business into the ground. It soon becomes clear that several people actually benefited from never having met JR. His ex-wife becomes a highly successful actress, whilst a distant relation never learns of his connection to JR and lives a fulfilling family life. After these revelations, the guardian angel reveals himself to be a demon, and demands that JR kill himself to improve everyone's lives. Staring at this demon in the mirror, JR raises the gun to his head and we hear a gunshot ring out, his fate unknown. In a bizarre coincidence, a month later, David Lynch's subversive soap Twin Peaks also ended with the protagonist doing himself considerable harm in front of a mirror. Number 6. Beckett and Castle Die? Castle was always a bit of a tonal mishmash. It was a frothy romantic comedy about a roguish crime writer and a steely detective that also featured grisly murders. It was basically moonlighting for the CSI generation. Once the series eventually paired Castle and Beckett, played by Nathan Fillon and Stana Kadic, respectively, they had to find dramatic ways to challenge the relationship. Rather than infidelity or divorce, there were new careers, kidnappings, amnesia, and in the final episode, a double shooting that left them both bleeding leading out on the floor of their apartment. This ending was originally intended as a cliffhanger that would have led into the ninth season. When the production team discovered that there would be no next season, they were granted permission to hastily insert an epilogue. Taking place seven years later, Castle and Beckett are seen to be enjoying breakfast with their three children having apparently survived the shooting. Some fans reacted with frustration at the insulting happily ever after climax, whilst others pondered whether or not the ending was an idealized future dreamt up by two dying lovers. Number 5. Kenneth the Page is Immortal in the hands of any other writers than Robert Carlock and Tina Fey, the final scene of 30 Rock's last episode would have been an indulgence too far. Far from being a disaster, it's a meta gag that stays true to the show's absurdist streak. The final episode is fairly standard sitcom fare, or as standard as a show like 30 Rock can manage. Liz Lemon becomes a mother to two adopted kids, Jack Donaghy finds himself again, and production on TGS comes to an end. It's in the final coda to the episode that things get wonderfully weird. The new head of the network Kenneth Parcell is listening to a sitcom pitch from Ms. Lemon, based on the stories of her great-grandmother. Giving the audience a knowing look, Kenneth commissions the show, and the camera zooms out to reveal flying cars in the background. We're far in the future and he hasn't aged a day. It's a very silly joke, but a brilliant payoff to one of 30 Rock's most enduring gags. That is, what's going on with Kenneth? Well, he's an immortal. An immortal who loves television. Number 4. Saint Elsewhere took place inside a child's mind. The 1980s hospital drama Saint Elsewhere is best known for two things, launching the career of Denzel Washington and unwittingly creating a sprawling fictional universe. Knowing that the show was to be cancelled, Saint Elsewhere's writing team pitched increasingly ridiculous ways to end the series with a bang. Possible endings included a nuclear bomb wiping out the hospital, whilst another had one character admit to assassinating JFK. The least bad option was that the Saint Elsewhere hospital was actually inside a child's snow globe. The characters and situations weren't real at all. They'd been thought up by young Thomas Westball. It's a daft ending, a Hail Mary by a departing writing team. However, it had extraordinary, unintended implications for the rest of network television. The show had alluded to several different shows whilst it was on the air. If St. Elsewhere was invented by Thomas, then surely so would those other series. It's a mind-bending concept that, in essence, means that series as diverse as Cheers, The X-Files, The Wire, and Arrested Development all share the same fictional universe. When you look deeper into the Tommyverse, it makes the MCU look like amateur hour. Number 3. The Dinosaurs Face the Ice Age Dinosaurs, a Jim Henson production for the ABC network, was a popular family sitcom in the early 1990s. It's best described as a reverse Flintstones, with intelligent dinosaurs living domestic lives alongside simpleton cavemen. It ran for four seasons and playfully turned various sitcom conventions on their head by having them performed by a cast of dinosaur puppets. It's therefore a shock when the final episode of the show goes down an incredibly dark route. It begins normally enough, with Earl the father trying to work the new barbecue, and ends with the family facing down their inevitable extinction. In a convoluted series of events, the local corporation and an unwitting Earl have inadvertently brought about an ice age with toxic pesticides and deforestation. The show's writers wanted to use the finale to educate the younger audience about humanity's own potential extinction event. Having been informed of the cancellation before writing the final series, creator Michael Jacobs felt that this was the only way to go. When you 
you do a show about dinosaurs, he said, you always have that extinction card in your pocket. Number 2. Life on Mars Goes to Mars on paper, an American remake of the BBC's Life on Mars had legs. By transporting modern cop Sam Tyler back in time, the show explored the tropes and problematic aspects of both 1970s television and policing in the UK. A remake could do something similar with American attitudes to both policing and cop shows. After all, there are marked differences between the grimness of the Sweeney and the hip coolness of Starsky and Hutch. Despite featuring some impressive performances, the remake never took off and was cancelled after one season. Season. In ending the series, the American writing team made a wild departure from creator Matthew Graham's original vision. Rather than reveal that Sam had been in a coma, they opted for something much more literal. The closing scenes of the series find Sam waking from hypersleep on the first manned mission to Mars. The 1973 cop show he's been inhabiting has been a simulation created by the ship's computer to keep him entertained on his long journey. His fellow cops were all members of the crew, including Gene Hunt, who's revealed to be Sam's estranged father. Father. Now that's far out. Number 1. How I Met Your Mother Kills the Mother Yes, you saw this one coming. How I Met Your Mother's finale is notoriously controversial and regularly features in lists of the very worst season finales. After spending nine seasons and nearly a decade building up to Ted Mosby meeting his future wife Tracy, the season finale gives viewers exactly what they want. Then it does something crazy. It kills her. The show's final episode jumps through 10 years of the characters' lives to reveal that Tracy died of an undisclosed illness after four years. To make matters worse, it's also revealed that the series' framing device, Ted's story to his teenage kids, hasn't been about the mother at all. It was all a means to seek their permission for him to get back together with his ex-girlfriend Robin. The kids give their blessing and he runs off to be reunited with her. Creators Carter Bays and Craig Thomas had conceived this finale during production on the second series. Eight years of speculation and emotional investment later, it just feels gross, as we're told rather than shown that Ted has grieved Tracy's abrupt death for six years, and the closing scene of him arriving at the doorstep of the one who got away isn't the big romantic ending the show thinks that it is. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any more bizarre TV series finales that deserve a spot on this list. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great lists.